it's time for another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas, the podcast covering the intersection of business, culture, entrepreneurship, and life in general here in the Ozarks. Whether you are considering a move to this area or trying to learn more about the place you call home, we've got something special for you. Here's our host, Randy Wilburn. Hey folks, and welcome to another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. I'm your host, Randy Wilburn, and I'm excited today, as I always am. When you guys hear this podcast, you know I'm excited. I wouldn't do it if I wasn't, but the bottom line is I'm sitting here with two fine gentlemen, Carter Malloy and uh, Garrett McClintock. These gentlemen are from Acre Trader. If you've heard the name, or maybe if you haven't heard the name, by the end of this podcast episode, you're going to be glad that you did. So stay tuned, because I think you're going to really enjoy this. But you know, I want to welcome you to the podcast. Carter, how are you doing? Thanks, Randy. Wonderful. Happy to be here. Good, good. How about you, Garrett? Man, I'm awesome. Good. Glad to be here with you. Good. Oh, well, I'm glad. I mean, originally I thought it was just going to be Carter and I, and then when he said, hey, I've got Garrett, my COO, I want him to sit down with us. I was like, yes, the more the merrier. That It brings multiple voices. And then your perspective is also going to be helpful too as we, as we go on to share. So I'd love for you guys, and Carter, I'll start with you. Um, just to kind of give us a little bit about your background story, I understand you're from Stuttgart, Arkansas, right? Not to be confused with Stuttgart, Germany. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, I was I was uh, born in Stuttgart, grew up in Little Rock, kind of going back and forth to Stuttgart, and then came here in '99 for school. Okay, moved back to Little Rock, spent five years out in San Francisco. My wife and I both always swore we would we would get back to Fayetteville at some point, and finally we were able to do that in 2018. So okay, moved back here then, and if I can help it, never moving again. Never moving again. I hear you. Now, is, did your wife go to the U of A as well? She sure did. We, okay. we, we met the first night of college. How about that? How about that? And then you went out to San Francisco. Now, I, I used to live in San Francisco. People that listen to this podcast know that. So it's one of my favorite cities. It's absolutely fantastic. But I got to say, Northwest Arkansas has really won my heart. I mean, this is a beautiful area and it is, is made for just, I don't know, just special experiences. So, And Garrett, you're from Memphis originally. Is that correct? I'm from just south of Memphis, so Tunica, Mississippi, but I kind of oh. grew up going back and forth from Tunica to Memphis for school, so I had a little bit of farm growing up and a little bit of town growing up. It was nice. Okay. All right. Great. That's awesome. So now you've been here how long in Northwest Arkansas? So uh, just a couple months after Carter, actually. we were When Carter was starting the business, a mutual friend connected us, and about 30 minutes into our first conversation, he said, hey, how do you feel about quitting your job and <laughs> moving your family into Northwest Arkansas. And I was like, well, I've never been there. So I'd love to come check it out. And, you know, I guess about a month later, my third trip to Fayetteville, I was in a U-Haul with my wife and all my stuff. And it's been pretty awesome ever since. That I, Man, I love story. You, you sound like me. I came here and I've told this story before on the podcast, but we came here on a really warm October week in 2014. Weather was perfect. I got to run on the Greenway, hanging out on Dixon. I was staying at the Dixon Street Inn. I mean, everything was right. And the person that brought me here wined and dined my wife every night. She got to experience a little <laughs> bit of everything that was here. And literally two months later, we were pulling up in a moving truck, oh, moving man. here to Northwest Arkansas. I'm telling you, it's so the line that I always use for new employees looking to move here is it's small town living, big city amenities. Yeah. Like everything that I had growing up in a town of a thousand, I feel like here because it's just like, you know, you're only five minutes away from almost everything. So we're sitting right here on in the square and like, I can see five or six trails that I go hiking on <laughs> all the time. And like, and at the same time, we have incredible performing arts. We have incredible visual arts. There's just so much here. It's a great place to be. It really is. It really is. So, and I mean, you, you're an Arkansas native. So when you were growing up, did you ever come up to Northwest Arkansas? I did. I actually wanted to come to college here. It was a, it was a really fun place. And so yeah. I just associated it with having a good time. I think- Not making that drive probably. Because <laughs> <laughs> that drive, I, everybody that's from central Arkansas that tells me about what it was like before the tunnel went in said it was a long game day whenever they would come up here for a game. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, grow, growing up, it was, it was difficult, but always knew, always wanted to be here really for the, the experience. And, and I think the experience for me personally has, has evolved quite a bit through being young and, and partying here and you know, loving Dixon Street to, to raising a family and building a company with other amazing people. Yeah. Well, of course, we came here to talk about that company and 
Acre Trader is the company. You guys are doing some really amazing things. And I had to do a little bit of research on, you know, what you guys were doing. I saw an interview that you did with Paul Gatling a while back. It was this was some time ago, probably not long after you guys launched, which was like in the spring of twenty nineteen. Is that correct? That sounds right. Yeah. So but tell the audience a little bit about Acre Trader and, and I don't wanna I wanna use your words. So we are a company that helps our customers buy and sell land smarter with advanced data, technology, and expertise. So we provide in, in a world of land transactions, and that sounds pretty wild and out there, land, farmland, but there's trillions of dollars of this stuff in the United States trading through what we view are some pretty antiquated processes and with incredible opacity, right? So there's just not much information out there for folks to be informed. So uh, my, my dad's one of those I consider him to be an incredibly bright and forward-thinking 87-year-old dude, <laughs> but there's no real place for him to discover information about the land, his land and land around him. There's no real place to then go transact with that information. So that's, that's what we're building here. As a company, we're, we're still very early in our, our growth. So we are growing quickly. So we've, we were at about 15 employees a year ago. Right now, we're at about 75. Uh, we hope to finish this year closer to 200. So if you know any really great people, please send them our way. I, uh, actually, we are I, might, I might. And actually, I know your, your head of HR, Morgan, who I've known for quite some time now. And I've actually interviewed her before and we're just friends. So I've told her that I will continue to send people her way because I think it's important for people that are here locally to know that there are dynamic companies that really have an eye towards the future, right? And are, are trying new things or doing new things and are pressing into new areas that I don't think anything is, this. it hasn't been seen or witnessed before in Northwest Arkansas. And it's it's nice. And, you know, I it's so funny. I did an a episode on the podcast a while back asking if, and it was just kind of tongue in cheek, is Northwest Arkansas the next Silicon Valley? But I think Northwest Arkansas is the next Northwest Arkansas, right? It's that place where there's something magical about this area, being at the at the foot of the, the Boston mountain range all around us as we look out in near this wonderful room that we're in, boardroom. But you know, there's so much to offer here. And, and there are more and more people are going to start saying, you know what, I may need to consider the middle of the country and I may need to consider what's being offered right here in Northwest Arkansas. That's why the Northwest Arkansas Council is doing what they're doing to attract brighter you know, individuals to come here. Not that we don't already have a lot of smart people coming out of the U of A, but again, it's we need as many smart bodies to come to Northwest Arkansas as are graduating and walking the halls of that university just up the street. Wholeheartedly agree. It's something that I, Garrett and I both spend a lot of time on is talent attraction. I do as well on, on the Northwest Arkansas Council. This is the issue that I find myself most passionate about is how, how do we attract great talent to help grow our region and to help, main, like while we grow, maintain this great feeling that we have, this great cohesion we have as a place. Over the last year, we can proudly say as a company, we've moved people here from Manhattan, from Brooklyn, Maryland, Austin, Dallas, Boulder, Seattle. Chicago, we've moved some people from all over the country and they're incredible. We get to come to work with them <laughs> every day. We're, we're really lucky as a company to, to have them here. But we are, we are continuously looking for more and more great, great folks to come join this incredible community that has been built for us and that hopefully we can help build going forward. Yeah. So now this whole idea of buying farmland, now you really, a lot of this you got hanging around your dad, spending time with your dad. How, was he just was that, that wasn't his business, right? It was just, he just saw the value in buying farmland. Was that how he started? It was actually his business. So he, he was in farming and, and farmland himself. Okay. My mom was an entrepreneur and, you know, and actually my, I say my dad is actually my, my stepdad to complicate it. My, my real dad is also my close friend and lives in South Arkansas. So oh, cool. I'm lucky to have uh, two dads basically. Nice. Uh, nice. My stepdad really ignited this passion in me for land and for farming. Garrett's got a, a similar story. I think where he mentioned this a moment ago, I grew up in the city going back and forth to the farm every weekend. Garrett sort of had an inverse experience. Yeah. So I grew up on a farm and my parents drove me, drove me to school every single day, an hour there and an hour back. But you know, there were mornings where we would go duck hunting in the morning and then go to school right after that because we were having that country life. And it was, yeah, it was really unique. And those are the, the types of people that we're excited to be working with and, and building a business alongside. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's like, and I'm sure you never in a million year, years thought you would be in this space, right? Being able to operate and create a product, if you will, that people in the farming community could really embrace. You know, I think it's been a challenge for farmers in this country as a whole in the last, you know, two or three decades, just 
acclimating to just the speed and pace of change, technology and otherwise. And you guys are kind of marrying the two and figuring out a way to leverage the technology piece along with the baked, good old fashioned farming aspect of, you know, growing and taking care of land around the country. That's exactly right. And honestly, that's one of the things that when Carter and I first spoke, most attracted me to this business is that he really had the idea for the farming community right off the bat. I mean, it was, hey, we can help these people grow their businesses. And very few people in the, let's call it financial technology, agriculture space had that right. And we've worked really hard to keep that as a centerpiece of what we do here. We want to help people in rural America grow their businesses. And every day, we just said it today, we want people to be able to grow big businesses with ours as a catalyst for that. And if we do that well, then we'll grow alongside them. Yeah. And so the platform as a whole allows almost anyone to invest in farmland where there really wasn't an easy way to do it before you guys came along. Is that accurate? Or I mean, I'm sure there were some companies out there, but they weren't mainstream, nor were they kind of making it as easy as possible for you to access and the information and the know-how to to decide that, you know, I'm not going to buy this extra rental property down here. I'm actually going to invest in this farmland instead. How did that go about? Yeah, that's correct. So one we can one farmland is a fascinating asset class in and of itself, right? And that the risk adjusted returns it's created for its investors have been very attractive. It has shown to be a, a historically great inflation hedge. So things and then not really much correlation. So it doesn't move alongside of the markets very much. Things that investors generally find attractive and, and especially in this type of environment of, of, of today. So one is a financial product, like on a standalone basis. It's really fascinating. The other is then we find that lots of people want to be involved with agriculture. It's sort of in all of our bones, right? And, yeah. and so we find tons of investor interest in in land and in farmland. The problem is, is usually if, if, if you have that interest, you discover you have that interest, what next? Go find a broker you've probably never met in a small operation somewhere in a county you've probably never been to and plop down a million dollars and now you get to manage a farm. Uh, guess what? That doesn't, uh, <laughs> that doesn't work for, for most people. And so what we challenged ourselves with within our business is, can we do all the difficult steps for folks and break this down so that they can own a part of a farm, right? So fairly straightforward how that works. We, we take a farm, put it inside of a unique LLC, uh, so a company, right? And, and you then own shares of that company. We take care of all the rest. So uh, whether that's closing the deal, managing it, collecting income, distributing the, those revenues, distributing the uh, reporting to the investors, et cetera. We really are here so that for the investor, rather than all those things I mentioned a moment ago that make it a non-starter, it's a few clicks of a mouse and you know a few minutes to to get started investing in farmland. Yeah, Matt, add something to that, please. You mentioned earlier that where everyone has this background of or sorry agriculture in their kind of as part of their blood as Americans. You know, we we grow up hearing my kid is like uh, almost two and he's you know, we go through the animal sounds all the time, right? Like <laughs> exactly. everyone has this common background. But not only that, a lot of people in, have relations who were farmers. Yeah. Like probably over 50% of our employees have that that they go back to. And that's something we're really excited about as employers and as teammates of folks is that we get to allow people to come work with us and help these communities and work on this really interesting and difficult problem as well. So it's both sides. It's how do I invest in it, but also how do I work on it that we're excited to, to help people with. So, and so just to help me understand the model as a whole, from the investor side, I have the option of coming to you and through your, through Acre Trader, purchasing shares in a property or purchasing all the shares of a property. So it, it can be, you know, it can be a portion or all of it. Is that correct? Or? That's correct. Okay. And then from the, the farmer's side of it, if I have a farm, say down the road and, and I don't know, I don't know, somewhere down by Devil's Den and I've got 200 acres of land. And I say, you know, I hear about what these guys up in Fayetteville are doing at Acre Trader. It sounds interesting, but, you know, this farmland has been in my family for the last 150 years. How does that work? How does, how do I, if I, you know, I'm getting up in my age, but I still want to keep this around and have some, you know, tangible benefit from this. How does that work? There are a myriad of ways that it works, but we'll, we'll take a farmer in, Indiana, a recent farmer that we work with. Uh, we 
versus Zoom Out, we have relationships with thousands of farmers all around the United States. Our goal is to help them grow their business. Yeah. In some cases, people want to exit because they're retiring, to your point, but we're looking for farmers who want to grow. So why do farmers want to grow? They already own a tractor. They, they, the more seed they buy, the cheaper the price they get. So there's real economies of scale in the business of farming. I think something that's not well known is that something like 40% of farmland in the United States is rented out. So this no, this is like a, that means like a trillion dollars of farmland, like a huge, huge amount. So there are lots of relationships like ours out there. What we attempt to do and what we're most successful at in, in sourcing farms for our platform is we go to the farmer, say, hey, do you want to grow your business? If so, we'd love to be a capital provider for you. The farmer says, absolutely, I want to grow my business, usually. And then they'll go hunt for us. So they'll, they'll go out and look for land that may be coming up for sale. And it, occasionally they find something that's attractive to us. And so we're able to put together a package where they get to grow their business on that land and rent that land. Uh, sometimes we'll share in the economics with them to make it a, uh, you know, make it a less burdensome relationship. We're, we're not there to squeeze the extra $20 of rent out of the farmer. We're there to build relationships. We enroll these farms in leading harvest, which is a sustainability standard. So we're, we're really here to invest alongside the farmer long-term as, as we believe that the, well, not, it doesn't have to be a belief. The most of farmland returns historically have been created from growth and value of the land uh, as opposed to the income. So we, we really do focus on that that core value. Today's a good example. We're launching a farm where we are then going in and making a bunch of investments into that farm to make it, uh, to help get water off of that farm better, to improve the, the tillable acres on that farm. And Carter, you talked about the Indiana example. To close that out, there was a farmer who knew someone in his in his community who wanted to retire. And this person wanted to sell her land to so that she would have some cash for retirement. She wanted to sell it to this farmer because she had known him all of his life. It's all about relationships. Exactly. And like, <laughs> you know what? He didn't happen to have X millions of dollars to go buy that thing. And so if we're able to come along and say, hey, look, you can lease this. And ultimately she wanted this person to farm the land that she owned. Mm -hmm. And we were a way for both of them to win in that relationship. He got a fair rent. He got to farm and expand his business. And she got to see him on that land every single day as she looked out her back window. That's a great story. And we want as many of those as we possibly can. And if we can be an alternative for folks who may not have the cash at the, at the time, that's awesome. Yeah. To one step further while we're digging in the specific one, and, and mind you, we do a farm or two a week, but this is a, a great example. That farmer also, while he did not have three or three and a half million dollars by that farm, he did have some cash, you know, some $50,000 he, he had in savings. He believed in that farm enough and was excited enough that he invested in that farm on our platform. Okay. So he's able to own part of the land that he's farming that he otherwise absolutely would not have had an opportunity to. Wow. So not only did he invest in it, but you guys invested in it. That's correct. Yeah. So, man, this is, this is, I, there's so many directions I want to take this, but I'm curious to know, it's, it sounds like one of the things, one of the biggest challenges for you guys is how do you get out into every feed and tax store in the United States <laughs> to let them know about Acre Trader, right? I, in my mind, it's like, you know, you guys remember when you were in college and you'd go and you'd see like a telephone pole and there would be like, you know, call this number if you want guitar lessons or whatever. It's how is Acre Trader getting out into the, the farming community that way to make the biggest impact? And that sounds like I'm probably asking like the million dollar question, right? Because you're trying to you're trying to source and figure that out right now. Yeah, you've zoomed into a, a fascinating piece of our business, which is I think most people look at it and go, "Oh, wow, you've got to go accumulate investors and dollars." And the, the reality is, there, there's a lot of money in the world looking to invest. The hard part of our job is finding the right partners to work with on the farming side to to find the right land to invest in. As a result, we have to say no the extreme majority of the time that we we see deal flow. So what, what that means is we have to think about the supply side of our business, this farm thing, as a funnel. Yeah. So what you're saying is hanging those flyers, you know, we, we've got to hang millions of those flyers. And so we, we do that a lot through digital marketing, you know, through, through on, online advertising, local marketing, et cetera. And then we've got a team of really great, uh, talented folks here who will field those incoming calls when the farmer tears off that piece of paper with our number. Uh, we'll take those calls and describe our program to them. I think it's a, a big part of what we do is just educating uh, that, hey, we're here, we're on your side, and we, we want to help. Uh, and, and then ultimately, again, once we establish those relationships, which we do at scale through our platform, then some of those come through the bottom of the funnel and, and fit 
fit all the various criteria necessary for a successful offering on the site. Yeah. And this platform that you're talking about, it's almost like one of the first of its kind. Is that correct? Would that be a, a fair assessment? That's correct. And where, where do you, I mean, what, what are you most excited about with this platform that you've created to allow you to connect with all these farmers and then also to identify and create a marketplace for investors, big and small, to participate? So I love hearing the stories, the individual stories. If there is nothing, like I have chills right now thinking about it. Yeah. There, there's nothing that makes me more proud than when we hear or we, we have posted in our Slack channel or somewhere an email from a farmer who said, thank you so much for everything you've done for me. And by the way, I want to refer you to a friend of mine who lives in the next state over. Yeah. Like instead of flyers, if your friend calls you up and says, you should really work with these guys because they'll give you a fair shake. That to me, I can't think of anything better. And on the same side, we have investors and we talk about this frequently too. Our job is to take care of those investors and to think of them as, you know, we have to think of them in the same way. We want the best for them. And so if those investors are having experiences, like we have have someone whose family were all farmers and he moved away from that, he became a doctor and he had this unaddressed feeling that I've left my heritage. And yet he was able to come in and invest on our platform in a farm. And he called one of our coworkers here and was like crying tears of joy because he was able to kind of come back to where he was from. Those are the types of stories that are just absolutely amazing and then make us want to work harder and harder every single day. Yeah. I think that that stems to like a unbelievably a rudimentary idea, which is if we create positive outcomes for the people we work with, then they'll tell their friends and they'll come back and, and work more with us. Yes, that's hard to do uh, in, in, in practice, but it's a very simple thesis that we've built our business upon. And frankly, that we've built our internally here, like like the culture, the employee environment. We treat people like adults. We, we love the people we work with. We're incredibly, incredibly selective about who we do work with. And ultimately, if we just create a place that people want to come to work and they're excited about their jobs, then they'll be really productive without us having to tell them that. Yeah. Uh, and so it's a, you know, again, it seems like this incredibly basic rudimentary type of idea, but it's one that we see so few companies get right uh, as you, you get off on tangents and start chasing one idea or one thing that's best for you as opposed to the best for the whole. And things usually come off the rails at that point. Wow. So how did, and of course, I, I just want to ask, because it is still technically the elephant in the room. How did the pandemic either change or alter how you were doing business? Did it impact you or did it not have the effect that maybe it, it has had on some other businesses? I think internally, it taught us an important lesson that we needed to learn anyway, which is communication is paramount. And as we all went home and started working remotely, we recognized just how vital dissemination of information is among a community at that time of 10 of us, uh, and, and even more so today at, at uh, 70 something. So one is internal communication. Two is then external communication as well. We saw this moment of like, wow, everyone's sort of freaked out a lot around the world. And you know, there's this, this, after a week or two, you realize, all right, I'm not going to die. So therefore, very unlikely. So therefore, what can we do to help educate our market about what we're out here doing? And so we actually doubled down pretty aggressively as a company with, with educational materials and webcasts. And, and it was actually a positive turning point inside of our business that investors were looking for more alternative assets. People were spending more time learning and sitting in front of their computers. And so we were very lucky in that regard. Okay. All right. Garrett, you want to add anything to that? The only other thing I would add is I frequently represent the farmer side when the, you know, the two of us are together. It is interesting to think about farmers don't have the opportunities to stay shut in. Yeah, they, no, absolutely. They have yeah. like, there is no remote work. For farmers, yeah, that's right. So. I mean, man, like, you know, we were talking about how, how quickly or slowly the business cycle moves in farming. There's only one business cycle, which is the growing year. Exactly. And you can't miss that. Yeah. And so that was another way we were excited to go out and help folks is like, well, we can do as much as we can from where we are, but how can we support folks who are in very different situations and dealing with uncertainty on a totally different level? I feel pretty good about how we address that. Yeah. So, you know, and, and I know somebody listening to this might say, well, this, I, this is exciting and I love this, or maybe I grew up on a farm or, you know, I'd love to get involved. Is as an investor, how, how small of an investment can be made through your platform in order to get involved with Acre Trade? Or how does anybody, even locally, somebody here in Fayetteville that says, you know, I've heard about those guys. 
Wasn't sure exactly what they were doing, but this sounds interesting. I'd love to put a little investment into a, a, a local farm or, or, or a farm, period. So how does that work? Minimums are often ten to 25000 which seems... It doesn't seem it, that is a lot of money. Sure, uh, it is a lot less than five million dollars, which yeah. is uh, often the size of farms that we're investing in. And we would like to have that lower over time. We would like to, if we're going to democratize the asset, let's go all the way. The business reality of that is it costs us money to service a customer, whether they are investing ten thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars, or a hundred dollars. Yeah, and a hundred dollars or five hundred dollars today in the in the constructs of our business, that would be a a money losing opportunity for us as a company. And, and we do have to build a sustainable and durable long-term business. So as we grow and over time, as we're able to improve automation around our platform, uh, then certainly we hope to open it up wider and wider. Okay. All right. And is and I'm curious to, to know, is cryptocurrency in any way playing a role in, in the farming environment at all? It doesn't. We, we've actually taken a pretty inverse stance of that in that we view Investing in farmland is something that can be very conservative in style, whereas cryptocurrency is very aggressive. Funny enough, it's like pretty core part of where the business idea came from. Is my my dad in 2017 was telling me we were buying a farm, and he was telling me he was going to go invest some some money in Bitcoin. And I told him he was an absolute moron, <laughs> and that was like five hundred dollars or eight hundred dollars for air. And I can't believe he would be this dumb. Yeah, uh, of course, like miserable, miserable investment advice. But it kicked off this idea of him saying, oh, can we, maybe we could create a token backed by farmland. And that, that sort of went, went down the road for us and of, can we do this? And I, I was always pretty adamant, again, very, very wrong about staying away from tokens and coins and NFTs and these things that are hot buzzwords. Uh, yeah. it, is, it does feel quite speculative and what we are really after is something that's the inverse of that. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I'm sure that, uh, that book is continuing to be written right now. So I'm sure there's something that's going to come up at some point that's going to be worth a closer look. So, you know, uh, without speculating, but well, that's, this is really exciting. What kind of information would you want to share with somebody listening to this? That's maybe like on the fence about coming to Northwest Arkansas on the fence about considering maybe a job with acre trader, you know, why here? Why now? When you walk by someone on the sidewalk here, they tend to look you in the eyes. And, and that's the best way I can describe this community is that people genuinely care. Yeah. Uh, people are friendly. They wave in the car, sometimes completely unnecessarily. <laughs> uh, you never hear people honk their horns. Right, right. You know, it, it's just a very different vibe than anywhere else that I've been. And for me, that, that sense of community, that sense of place is something that's in incredible about Northwest Arkansas and the reason why my wife and I want to raise our children here and spend their lives here. Yeah. Garrett, you want to add to that? Sure. I think the best thing I can do is share my experience, which is my wife and I came up here really excited about the business, not knowing about Northwest Arkansas. And within a month of being here, we weren't certain because we have a lot of family elsewhere, but the conversation began to happen of, is this where we're going to be the rest of our lives? Sure. And if you can move somewhere and within a month, that becomes a question, I think it's a really compelling place to be. Carter's laid out the reasons, and I think there are many, many more, but all I can tell you is I love it here. It's yeah. awesome. And we are really excited and proud to be building a business here and hopefully bringing a whole lot more people who are incredible to this area. Yeah. You know, and it's funny. I'm glad you mentioned that. And I think anybody listening to this that's not from here and, and maybe is looking at Arkansas with, a, with a, a bit of skepticism, I think if you have an open mind and you come here, and I, I had an open mind because I'm telling you, you know, 2012, if you had said, hey, you're going to be living in Arkansas, I just said, you're a liar. No <laughs> hell I'm living in Arkansas. And I've become the biggest fanboy for Arkansas, specifically Northwest Arkansas. Let's be clear. Northwest Arkansas is a special place and it's just continuing to grow on me. And I have no problems convincing people why they should come visit on vacation, why they should consider coming here, cost of living. Just like you said, I mean, even just, you know, the little things looking you in your eye. I mean, I lived in Boston for 17 years where people won't look at you, period. And it's like, and if you do look at them, it might be a problem to a place like Northwest Arkansas where, you know, like cheers, everybody knows your name and, you know, you're, you're embraced and welcomed. Even if you're a new person on the block, you know, somebody that would come here and work for Acre Trader could come here 
and get thrown into local activities happening and people would treat them as if they'd been here for forever. That's right. Hey, how, do you ever define Northwest Arkansas on this podcast? I moved up here and I was like, oh, we moved to Fayetteville. <laughs> and then I went to the first party, like it was a uh, maybe like a tailgate or something. And this really nice lady who I, I know very well now was like, Welcome to Northwest Arkansas. I went, wait, this is Fayetteville. What do you, what do you mean? Right. So how do you define like, so, what are okay, you inclusive I'm, of? I'm glad you asked that. So the way that I define Northwest Arkansas is I say that Northwest Arkansas, if you think of a, a, a sandwich, the top piece of bread is Bella Vista slash Bentonville. The bottom slice of the bread is Fayetteville. And then you've got Rogers and Springdale in between. That's your meat. And then you've got all your accompaniments like Siloam and you've got Eureka Springs and all the other places around the area that add to it. But that's your sandwich. That's your main sandwich there. And I'm even giving Bella Vista love now because actually the more I talk to people, it's like, where do you live? I live up in Bella Vista. I'm like, oh, okay. And it's really not that big of a deal, right? I mean, you you were in the Memphis area from Tunica. And so you, you know, getting in a car and driving 20 minutes, we can get in a car and drive 20 minutes and be in a lot of great places right here in Northwest Arkansas. It feels like the same town. Yeah, it does. It really does. It does. Now, I love Fayetteville. I'm a homer for Fayetteville, but I like Bentonville too. I yeah. mean, each place has its own unique aspects. So, you know, but. Uh, so, some of my closest friends are from Eureka Springs, and I would love to know what accompaniment you would define that. <laughs> as. <laughs> we'll save that for now. That's a whole other yeah, podcast. Yeah. I would say, yeah. It's, it, you know, it's like. I don't know. Maybe it's like sauerkraut where it's, it's a probiotic like where it it is, <laughs> you know, depending on uh, what you need, it's, it definitely, um, and not everybody likes it, but those that do like it, <laughs> yeah. love it. And okay. it's actually good for you. Right. I look at Eureka Springs. I love going to Eureka Springs because it's just a nice getaway. It's a beautiful area. The drive is really cool. There's some great restaurants there. There's some great places to get all kinds of just little Trotskys and things like that. And it's a good place to go hiking, Holiday Island up there. I mean, it's it's nice. And people, I mean, in the summertime, it's hard to get in there because everybody and their mother is visiting. So, and they've got a couple of haunted hotels, which is kind of cool too. So, <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot to offer, but all right. So we're going to wind this up. You guys have been more than gracious to spend some time with us here on the podcast today. But as we close out, what's the best way if anybody wants, after listening to this, is either has a a friend or a cousin that needs to reach out to you guys because they may be a great addition to the Acre Trader team, or you just want to connect with folks, what's the best way for them to connect with you guys? On our website at Mm acretrader.com, on the top right there is a menu and there's an about us page, pages about our impact. So you can learn more about our business and what we're up to. And uh, within those, there's also a page for careers. I think we have something like 45 open positions right now. (laughs) 45? We do. Really? Okay. Wow. So you guys are going to be a pretty big company at some point in time. That is the hope and the plan. That is the plan. So it's funny because I haven't, I don't know that I've been in a building in Northwest Arkansas that's higher than six stories. So being (laughs) here on six stories, at first I was like, when it's sweet 600, I was like, man, is it this high? I, I think I've been to the Hunt building, but. Yeah, I mean, it's cool to be over here. I'm excited to see what you guys are able to do. So I will certainly be rooting on the sidelines, telling your story to anyone that will listen. And I would encourage anybody that's listening to this podcast to go check out acretrader.com. You can also on LinkedIn, check out Garrett and check out Carter and uh, connect with them. If you're on LinkedIn and you just want to chat with them, uh, you know, I chatted up Carter and he was kind enough to connect with me. So I don't know if it was because of the podcast or just because, you know, he liked my picture. I don't know, whatever. But the bottom line is these are some cool guys and they're doing a really great thing. They're, they've created a much needed platform to serve a community that hasn't always been served in the best way possible. And again, you know, farming, as you said, ag- agriculture, it is the foundation and backbone of our society. And uh, we were agrarian in nature before we became industrialized, before we got into the whole tech space. And so, you know, th- this whole movement back to that, I think is important. And Acre Trader is really making an effort to to show people what why it's so relevant today, 2022. So Garrett, Carter, thank you guys so much for coming on the podcast. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having thank us. You. Absolutely. Well, there you have it, folks. Another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. I hope you enjoyed that. Every day, there's something new that I'm learning. And just sitting down this week has been a busy week for me. I've had a lot of podcast episodes, but just sitting down with Carter and Garrett was really refreshing. And it just reminds me that I made the right choice by coming here to Northwest Arkansas. So if you're thinking about coming here 
reach out to your boy, connect with me. I'll be happy to tell you all that I know about the era. I'll even tell you the bad stuff, right? Because no place is perfect, but trust me, I will give you the whole 411 on what makes Northwest Arkansas so great. And I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Please consider checking out our website at IamNorthwestArkansas.com. And remember, our episodes drop every Monday at noon or thereabouts. So regardless, rain or shine, you can get a brand new episode on the latest thing happening in Northwest Arkansas. We cover organizations. We cover fantastic people like the two gentlemen that were, that were just heard from. And so we appreciate you listening and sharing this podcast, both near and far. I'm Randy Wilburn, your host, and I will see you next week. Peace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. Check us out each and every week, available anywhere that great podcasts can be found. For show notes or more information on becoming a guest, visit IamNorthwestArkansas.com. We'll see you next week on I Am Northwest Arkansas.